It began in healthy looking pigs months, perhaps years ago. A new coronavirus spread silently within herds. Gradually, farmers started getting sick. Infected people got a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like signs to severe pneumonia. The sickest required intensive care, many died. Experts agree, unless it is quickly controlled, it could lead to a severe pandemic, an outbreak that circles the globe and affects people everywhere. The mission of the Pandemic Emergency Board is to provide recommendations to deal with the major global challenges arising in response to an unfolding pandemic. The board is comprised of highly experienced leaders from business, public health, and civil what society. What we just watched there in that clip isn't current news, even though it is frighteningly similar to current events. No, what that clip was from is a pandemic tabletop exercise that was held on October 18th of 2019 in New York City called Event 201. That clip was only a minute long, and if I hadn't told you, you'd have thought I pulled that from today's headlines. Well, watch the whole event for yourself, and you'll be terrified at how similar this war game held a month before the outbreak it describes all too closely happens. Hosted by the John Hopkins Center for Health Security in partnership with the World Economic Forum and, of course, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, this exercise simulated a coronavirus outbreak with eerily similar symptoms and behavior to the one actually unleashed on humanity just one month after this pandemic war game took place. Is that a coincidence? Well, I don't personally believe in coincidences anymore. The global elites gathered to play out and prepare for exactly what is happening a month prior to it unfolding. And you can watch all of Event 201 online. It is easily searchable on YouTube and isn't hidden at all. Honestly, some of it is boring and it's very long, but if you stick with it, you're going to find it very frightening, especially if you're awake and aware to reality. This Event 201 was a very elaborate war game complete with fake news clips and science analysis. This means that they took everything into account, including media response in this drill. But there's much more than that here. In the hours of footage, you will see that what is happening right now with COVID-19 is all playing out just as Event 201 projected it to. Not just the symptoms matching or the severity of the virus itself, but the plans that are rolling out in response to the virus as well are all matching up too closely to this war game. Then you add Bill Gates into the equation and red flags start to be all that you can see here. And we know that there is an agenda to wipe a large portion of us out and to huddle the rest of us into smart cities crammed on top of each other like roaches. They are open about that much and they have had many gatherings to plan out how they're going to do it. And they put all of this in plain sight and use predictive programming to prepare humanity for what is planned out for us. These predators that lord over humanity are dangerous. And honestly, I'm tired of dancing around that fact. Now, it can't be known at this point how serious this virus will be itself or how devastating the global and economical effects of it will end up being. But I think it's very clear that we're never going back to normal. This particular article from MIT goes into a little bit of detail on what that might mean at a minimum. But as I read it, I couldn't help but read between the lines here and let me see if you feel the same way. It starts out by saying that social distancing is here to stay and that to stop the coronavirus, we will need to radically change almost everything we do, how we work, exercise, socialize, shop, manage our health, educate our kids, and take care of our family members. And we all want things to go back to normal quickly. But what most of us has probably not yet realized, yet will soon, is that things won't go back to normal after a few weeks, or even a few months, and some things never will. Now this particular article theorizes that this would need to continue at least 18 months. With full shutdowns like what you are seeing now continually going on, two months and then one month off. Which forces me to ask, how much will people give up in the interest of feeling safer? And 
How could the economies of the world even handle something like that? How could the economy handle being shut down for 18 months? But reading between the lines of what this article implies is frightening. And it is my belief that things are going to get very bad for us in the near future. And everything is changing. Now this honestly has been a hard time for me as a conspiracy theorist. Because I am seeing everything that we have warned about for all of this time come to a head at the same moment. And honestly, it's difficult to not become the left-leaning Alex Jones and start screaming that the sky is falling. But I don't want to stir people up or cause panic. And I'm not trying to be extreme. I'm just being as honest with you about what I'm seeing unfold as I can. Now, we were at a time when a mass awakening was reaching a climax worldwide and uprisings were taking place all over the globe. And then a pandemic rolls out and the world goes into complete shutdown. Now, is the new world order moving into the final stages of their plan? I got to tell you that it is my fear that they are. We have found ourselves in a dystopian nightmare of a reality where truth tellers sit in prison cells or hide in exile from the tyrannical forces that want to silence them for what they've exposed. Truth is buried and propaganda is king. It's everywhere. The average citizen is bombarded with lies on a constant basis and is oblivious to what is really happening in the world by design. And the truth is being actively hidden from them. And anyone that's trying to inform people is being silenced by corporations who now control all platforms for sharing information. The whole world is currently shut down right now over COVID-19. And economies all over the globe will crumble because of that. And who will suffer? The people. That's who. We will suffer. Minimal. At the bare minimum, we are heading for a depression. Now, I, like many of you, are already feeling the effects. And as unemployment climbs and our leaders fight back against the crisis by printing out tons of money and then distributing it amongst the upper 1% while they throw down table scraps to the people, I can't help but say what this all looks like. It looks a whole lot like the elite are cashing out as the rug is pulled out from under the people. Minimal. Now, they just pulled off the biggest theft in human history and called it a stimulus package. They robbed us blind is what happened, and we are heading for financial disaster as they walk away with our money. But I think it's far worse than just that. I think we are witnessing the end game of the globalists and that they have been conditioning the people for what's coming for quite some time. Now, I said all along that I believed Andrew Yang's whole presidential candidacy was a sham just to sell the American people on the concept of UBI. He was nothing more than a pitch man for universal basic income, and they used him to sell it and then gauge the public's response to it. Andrew Yang never thought in his wildest dreams he'd be president. He was a con artist, a wolf in sheep's clothing who was there only to sell the concept of UBI to the people. And now they're rolling it out in small chunks. They aren't calling it that yet, but they are getting people used to it as they falsely sued them through their lying ass media propaganda machine that this economy can survive this crisis. But it can't. And they know that it can't. And they've played this scenario all the way out in Event 201 and have figured out how to best enrich themselves during what they know is the downfall of global capitalism. Now, I could be wrong. I want to be wrong, but I don't think that I am. And honestly, it would be irresponsible either way not to sound the alarms at this point. Because I don't know for sure what is coming our way, and I can only theorize about it at this point. But what I do know is the time is now for the people to unite in solidarity and rise up against the tyranny that is holding our society back. These greed-driven predators will never stop until they have it all. That's what they want, and they want to exterminate a large number of us once they get it all. Are we going to let them? Now, I don't care if I'm overreacting and we won't soon be gathered up in FEMA camps under martial law wondering how we all ended up in this mess. We are in a class war. That's a fact, and we have the same enemies in that war, and it is us versus them. For years, skeptics have asked me over and over again who they are. Now, we conspiracy theorists do play the pronoun game quite a bit, 
but it's through necessity mostly. But regardless, the they is getting ready to be made very clear soon enough. Now this little video has become more of a rant, and there's a good reason for that. And it's what is happening right now is insanity. What is going on is all so crazy, and to try to comment on it responsibly is very hard, especially since it's all happening with such speed. Now I have struggled with how to even broach this subject honestly because I believe this is it. I think that this is the moment that we have been warning about for all of this time. This agenda that has been enslaving humanity for thousands of years. I think this is their final power grab. I think we will lose the internet soon for a period of time. Television and radio as well. And when and if it returns, it will be nothing like it was before. The internet especially. Things will go dark for us. And all we will get is official information from the state. Martial law will be enacted and the country will be shut down. And when society resets, we will be in their new world order. I believe America as we knew it is over. Now, those are my beliefs. Those are my theories. And I've been told that that makes me a fear monger. Or even worse, means that I have no faith that good can overcome evil. And neither of those things are true. I've actually been fighting having this discussion for a long time because I want to be wrong, but I also don't want to be irresponsible and not say what I'm seeing unfold. Others are seeing it as well. It's just we all seem to see it a little bit differently. Now, there are those, the many, who believe it's all for the good of society and they trust their leaders to ensure that everything will work out. Then there's those that believe as I do and are saying what I am attempting to say here, that this is the end of life as we know it, that everything is going to change, and the final blow of the authoritarian state is being dealt. And there are even those that believe through admirable faith that this is all being done to eliminate the evil forces in this world. They admit it's happening, but see good overcoming the evil in the world. The ones I worry about the most, though, are the first group, and we often refer to them as sheep. No matter who's right here, they will be hit the hardest. The majority of people fall into this category and their entire world is getting ready to change. And we must lead that change. No matter if I'm right or wrong, change is coming either way. And this article is correct. We're never going back to normal. And was this all pre-planned? We may never know the answer to that. But what we do know is they planned out the response to this event and that they will capitalize off of it either way. Problem, reaction, solution. That's their doctrine, and they never let a good crisis go to waste. So whether pre-planned or not, they will use this to their will like they have always done, and this is the time for humanity to move into self-defense mode. Because if not now, when? Now I, for one, don't want to wait around for those so-called leaders who have never shown that they represent my best interest, to decide how to best care for me after they've finished milking society dry. And this pandemic could very well be a plandemic, but either way, we are facing a crisis as a united people, and no matter what happens in these coming months, we must unite against evil, greed, and corruption during it. It is time to fight back, and we are going to go from the black sheep of the family to the leaders of our communities. We must keep people calm and focused on our true enemies during what will be a difficult time for most. People are going to panic. They will be terrified, and the powerful will try to use that fear. We must not let them. We must guide the people. We must focus them towards the real enemies of humanity. It's time to show them who they are, and then teach them how to fight back against them. So keep fighting out there and protect the truth, because it will be the weapon that destroys the evil in the world in the end. And that's why they are fighting so hard to eliminate it. This is our fight, and no hero is coming to save us. We are the ones that we've been waiting for, and it's our time to accept our role. It is the responsibility of the awake to wake the others, and that's what we must do. We must inform and lead them through what is coming, and we must unite as many as we can in the class war that we are inevitably heading towards. So protect yourself in the armor of God and stand with the truth. Lead the sheep 
and help good to defeat the evil of the world and end the murderous greed of this corrupt society once and for all. Everything is about to change, but it will be up to us how it all turns out. This is ours, not theirs. Remember that and keep fighting and keep spreading the truth and keep pushing for justice in this unjust world. Because good can win out in the end, but only if we own our destiny and take responsibility for our future. So keep fighting out there, y'all. And we can take this evil cabal down. Thanks for listening to me rant about what I think is coming. And be careful out there, guys. I'll see you all again real soon right here from Conspiracy Theories and Chill on me on Things and Stuff.